All right. Howdy, howdy, howdy. This is Chris with RoofingSites.com and welcome to our newest workshop, how to maximize your lead flow for pay-per-click and Google ads. It's everyone's favorite topic I know, and it's something that is near and dear to my heart because it is one of the things that we plug into every single roofer that we work with because it's important. Uh, and we're going to get into all that stuff on why it's important, but first let me share my screen and get the presentation going. Okay. All right. Well, welcome to this uh, workshop. Uh, I'm calling these all workshops from now on instead of webinars because workshops really imply that, you know, we're going to get our hands dirty a little bit here, right? We're going to talk and about things and we're going to get you a little bit more um, things by the end on, on exactly what are the next steps after this? What do you need to do as far as that goes? Okay. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right. So before we get into ads and all that kind of stuff, let's first talk about the marketing framework here that we call our four-hour appointment machine. Okay. This is um, for our roofing appointment machine. Sorry. Uh, I also refer to this sometimes as my 4R roofing marketing system, um, but this is a system that I have built over the past 20 years, and I'm not going to get super in depth with this, uh, but it's it consists of four pillars um, that is reputation, reach, resell, and referral, okay? Reputation um, is your foundation. Uh, you can't do anything else in marketing unless you you have a solid foundation, just like building a house. Uh, reach is simply getting in front of more people today than knew you yesterday. Um, and is where most roofing companies really, you know, focus their energies on. Um, resell, that's easy. Let's, re let's resell back to those people that we have sold to before, as well as uh, let's do a little bit of remarketing here, you know, for, for uh, Facebook and Google. Um, and then referral, well, that's easy. That's how most businesses are built, but yet very little, com very few companies actually have systems in place to ask for referrals on a, on a regular basis. So, um, if you do something right in all four of these and continue to build in all four of these pillars, you're going to have a very, very solid foundation, a very solid marketing system, right? And that's why I call this the four hour roofing marketing system. All right. Okay, so who am I? My name is Chris Hunter. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of RoofingSites.com. I'm also the author of The Ultimate Guide to Digital Marketing for Roofers. If you don't have this in your hand and you are a roofer, you need to go to go.roofingsites.com in order to get that into your hands. We will send it to you for free. Okay, but this is... In a nutshell, this is 333 pages of the last 20 years of my knowledge in the digital marketing world, um, as well as working with roofers. This is what is working right now. This is the exact blueprint that you need in your hands in order to, um, in order to do really well with your marketing. And I am, we are, Roofing Sites is a member of the NRCA, uh, the National Roofing Contractors Association. I'm a father of three. I've got a 17-year-old, a 14-year-old, uh, and an 11-year-old, uh, two boys and a girl. One is an Eagle Scout. One, uh, the middle son is almost an Eagle Scout, and the girl really has no interest at all in Scouts. I'm a Scout. I've been a Scout all my life, very deeply involved with that uh, organization, and think that it is the best thing for kids to be involved with. I could talk about that all day long, but that's not why we're here, right? All right. I've been doing SEO since 1998, uh, really before Google even launched. Um, my first site that I got ranked was my own site. Uh, I was playing around with it uh, and got it ranked on Yahoo. So that really, really dates me here uh, before Google even launched. Um, once Google started getting more and more popular, uh, that got on my radar and I really started um, – really playing with it and trying to figure out its algorithm because because it was way different than Yahoo. Yahoo was a directory. Google was now this software piece that that determined all of these things. And and again, I can geek out on this stuff all day long. Just know that I've been doing this a really, really long time. My random fact for this workshop is that I love to camp and go backpacking in the mountains with 
well, my sons, with my friends, with uh, uh, whoever wants to go. I, I love the mountains. I love to go backpacking in the mountains. So um, I will be there this summer uh, going to Phil Mount Scout Ranch, which is uh, uh, in northern New Mexico, in the mountains in northern New Mexico. is probably one of the coolest places on earth if you have never been there. My mission is in life is to double the size of 100 roofing companies by 2025. Okay. Um, I, I chose this as my big, hairy, audacious goal, um, for roofing sites because I really love helping people. I love helping small businesses grow and it's, it gives me greatest satisfaction to help and see a small business double in size. And, and really that's, that's my goal. Um, and what I really, really want to you know, do for every single one of the roofing companies in the world. Okay. It's just go out there and let's, let's get you more leads and sales and, and, and let's get you growing your company. All right. Before we move on, <clears throat> I'm going to need your attention. Okay. Let's uh, take this few extra minutes. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in this workshop. There's probably going to be hopefully about 30 minutes. Sometimes these last about 35, 45 minutes before we get into a QA. and a But during this time, let's, let's stay focused. If you will, please turn off your cell phones, um, turn off Facebook. Because if you're serious about doubling or tripling the leads that you pull in from your roofing website, pull in from all of your marketing efforts, the next 60 minutes, the next 45 minutes, the next 35, whatever that is going to be, are critical. Okay. And we want to work on our business and not in our business. Okay. Okay. So what are we going to cover today? Well, we're going to talk about why pay-per-click is really the key to unlimited scalability in terms of lead flow for your roofing business. Um, and I say that because you can turn things on and off, right? You're it's literally pay per click. So you can turn things on and get things running within a day, um, versus search engine optimization which you have to wait for months and months and months to actually start working, right? You have to have a lot of patience for that. Um, pay-per-click is, is almost the same exact thing as SEO, except it's turn it on or off, right? So uh, we're going to talk about some cool things today, but, but really this is the, you know, if you're going to scale your roofing company, ads is really the key and getting the ads right is really the key, Okay. Um, we're going to go through some examples of some pay-per-click uh, campaigns that are generating uh, on the low side, five to 15 X return on investment for uh, some roofing companies that we're working with. Um, you know, it's, it's all about the ROI, right? And, and, and we're going to show you a few examples of that, but you know, it's, it's really key if we, if we put all of these principles in place that to get there, right? To get that positive ROI. We're going to talk about how to set up and structure your pay-per-click marketing campaign for minimum cost and lead and maximum ROI. All right. And again, it's all about that ROI. I'm going to show you some KPIs some tracking landing pages, campaign structures, those kinds of things uh, for that. Now, if you stay till the end, guess what? You get my book. I'm going to send you my book uh, for free. All right, so please stay till the end of this uh, workshop. Um, again, turn cell phones off, get rid of all distractions, okay? Okay, so the one of the biggest questions that I get is, you know, I've tried pay-per-click, I've tried Google Ads, I've tried this, I've tried that. Should it really be part of my internet marketing strategy? Absolutely. It absolutely is part of a solid strategy, right, for an and I'm just rushing through this, but it's it's really part of the overall strategy, right? And I've got a friend in the industry that calls this, um, you know, omnipresence approach. You and and that's exactly what we're doing here. And with pay per click, we we want to use that, right, to get immediate leads, right? But we also want to do that to take up as many spots as we possibly can on the Google search engine result page, right? So anytime someone types in, um, you know, roofing, whatever your location is, you want to pop up at least three to four times on that page. You want to be in the local service ads. We're not going to go over those today. You want to be in the uh, pay-per-click section. You want to be in Google maps, and then you want to be in the organic section. You know, Google to me is and has been for a really, really long time 
the place to be, right? Meaning it's all about positioning. If you're positioned in the right place at the right time that people are searching for you, and that's what Google is about, right? If you're in the right place at the right time that they're searching for you, then you're more likely to get that lead. But if if you if you're not in local service ads, those are the Google guarantee ads, by the way. If you're not in ads, if you're not in maps and, and, and you're not on the organics SEO part of the page, you don't exist these days. Because guess what? Yellow pages used to be where most businesses, when they went into business, would would advertise. Well, it's now. This little thing right here, you know, and I'm shaking my, if you're listening to this on my podcast, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my <laughs> phone up here, right? But this, uh, the, the phone, the thousand dollar machine that sits in our pocket has literally replaced the yellow pages. It's replaced a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. Camera, microphone, if you want to use it for, for recording your voice. I mean, there's, there's video, there's a lot of things that it has replaced, but the biggest, in my opinion, for small businesses is that it has 100% replaced the yellow pages, okay? And it's been a really long time that that's, that's been happening. And if you're not on Google, if you're not on the first page of Google, you do not exist because no one goes to the second page, right? Okay, so I'm going to get off my soapbox on that, but just know that, yes, pay-per-click ads, Google ads should be a part of your overall strategy to achieve omnipresence in your market. Okay. To, meaning that, that wherever people go, you want going through people's minds. Wow. This roofing company is everywhere. I, you know, and, and, and then you, all of a sudden you get this top of mind awareness so that when there is a roof leak, if there is a hailstorm, if there is a, a branch falls on their roof and damages their roof, you're the first people that they call in and, and you become not only a choice, you become the choice, okay? And there's a, a huge difference in that. And, and that's exactly where we want to be as, as businesses, okay? All right, I talked about all this. So I'm going to jump right through this, but this is going through, you know, uh, why it should be part of your internet marketing strategy. You show up quickly, you show up as often as as where your your customers are looking and and you know, we want to make sure that we show up in, in non-geomodified terms, you know, roofer, roofing, roof repair, hail damage, you know, and, and meaning not like roofer college station. That's where I live in college station, Texas. So roofer college station, roofing college station, roof repair college station, hail damage or college station, right? Those all have their places, but you want to show up on the main keywords. And because of this, you can achieve unlimited scalability. So let's talk real quick about why most pay-per-click campaigns fail, right? And I, we, we audit a lot of um, accounts. We look at a lot of accounts. And because of this, because we've been doing this so long, because we work with so many roofers that, that um, it's really easy to put, pinpoint why campaigns fail, right? So the biggest part is that most roofing companies just fail to understand, right? Why Google ads, why the auction process even exists and the complexity of everything, right? We want to make sure that, that when we're setting up ads, we, we understand exactly how to win that bid. Okay. For that keyword, because again, it's pay per click, right? And, and it's King of the Hill. There's only three spots at the top of the page. And it's whoever it's not, it used to be about who paid the most, but now it's about way more than that. There's an actual algorithm involved and we're going to go over a little bit of that here in a little bit. Okay. But just know that most people fail to understand that it's more than just, Hey, I'm going to pay $25 a click. Right. And that's very high by the way. They only set up one ad group for all of the services. Um, you know, there's there's one ad group for, that that has absolutely everything in it. You want you want to break those things out into different ad groups, okay? Um, Google really really likes it that way, and and it's called siloing. And you want to basically silo out your groups of keywords into individual um, ad groups, okay? So most people fail to do that. They just lump it all in. Um, they don't use specific text ads for um, landing pages and groups of keywords. And in fact, most people, um, I think this next one, no, uh, I was going to say this, ne the, the next one is, is that they're all also driving 
all of that traffic to the the homepage, right? When the homepage might or might not be about metal roofing, right? You want to drive those ads, those that traffic and, and the keywords that people are searching for to an actual page about metal roofing if, if they're if they're searching for metal roofing, okay? There is no strong call to action. This is a huge one, right? Uh, you want to make sure that people know what you do, how you solve their problems, and how to get it, okay? Now, a call to action to me is either call real big, call and then your phone number, or it's a big button that says get an estimate or schedule an inspection or something like that, right? And, and it stands out. And we're going to go over some landing page stuff here in a little bit, and I've, I've got... You know, our, our last uh, workshop, if you're, if you're looking at us on YouTube, uh, if you're, or actually if you're listening to this driving in your car when you get back to the office, go look us up on YouTube. And, and we have a whole thing uh, based, a whole workshop based on, you know, conversions on a website. And, and in that, I talk about several things, but the big things is the call to actions, okay? All right. So the other part is uh, why most pay-per-click campaigns fail is that they're just not targeting the right keywords. Okay. Um, they might be targeting some of the keywords, but but not all of them. And, and we want to spread the net as wide as we possibly can uh, with as many keywords as we possibly can uh, and start whittling them down with negative keywords inside of the Google ads account. Okay. So, or, or inside of each of those campaigns and make sure that, that we've got negative keywords being added on a regular basis. Okay. Um, okay. So we're going to pause here for just a second. And, um, I want to everybody to type a one in the chat. If you are with me still. All right. One, 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 one. All right. All right. Cool. Um, now, does anybody have any questions so before we move on to this next section was really um, case studies. Uh, any, any questions, Ross, uh, in the chat? You can unmute yourself. Yeah, we're getting one. It says, how do you determine the keywords? Okay. All right. Well, we're going to kind of get into that here in a little bit, but um the, the big part of it is is just making sure that you have the main sets of keywords, you know, um, roofer, uh, roofing company, roofing um, contractor, uh, you know, roof repair, um, you know, all of those things. You want to make sure that that you have that. But built into Google, there is a tool called the, the Keyword Finder tool that will help you determine exactly which keywords you should be targeting. It'll tell you the search traffic, all that kind of stuff. Now, it won't tell you detailed information on, on your exact uh, location. It used to. It used to give us all of that detailed information, but um, I think us search engine optimization folks were overusing that tool, so they, they pulled that information back. What I'd like to do is, is type in the biggest metro area. If you're not in a big metro area, um, let's say that you're in College Station, our biggest nearest uh, metro area is Houston. We're 90 miles northwest of Houston. So I would type in roofing Houston um, into the keyword finder tool, and it'll give me all sorts of really good information, like how many searches, uh, how competitive that it is, and all that kind of thing. But there are also tools on the market to do that, like SEMrush and, and uh, Click Finder and, and stuff like that. There's there's lots of, of tools out there that, uh, or sorry, keyword finder uh, that will help you uh, find that information. All right. Any other questions before we move on? No, no. Okay, cool. All right. So let's talk about some case studies here real quick. All right. So in th this, we literally took some screenshots from our account uh, this morning. This is our overall uh, Google ads account. All right. You'll notice, and, and by the way, this is not... Uh, you know, uh, for a long period of time, this is September 30th to through October 22nd. I didn't even put it out 30 days before I took a screenshot, probably should have, but you know, as you can see over here on the left, we've got 43,000 clicks, uh, 70, con uh, sorry, 704 conversions. I don't know how there's a 0.47 in there. I never understood that. Um, average cost per click, uh, a dollar 16. That's super cheap, by the way. Um, and our total cost of fifty thousand uh, dollars. So, if you if you actually do the math on that, right? I've got right here, 
uh, in this graphic, average cost per lead of $71.25. So that's, this is over all of our accounts that we are managing. You know, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. Not everyone is going to be like this right here because we, we do have a legacy, what I call my legacy agency, where we work with other types of businesses as well. Okay. Um, okay. But let's get into a roofer. Um, so this is a roofing company um, in a decently um, competitive area. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, and, and if you look at the dates here, I spread it out by like six months. So June 27th through October 24th. Uh, they've had 313 clicks, 87 conversions, $45 cost per conversion, and the grand total cost on that uh, campaign is really close to $4,000. So, you know, it's and 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 what we want to look at on our on our KPIs here are are really how many conversions are you getting, and what's the cost per conversion, right? That's the real two key metrics that we want to key in on here. Okay. Um, Okay, so talking about this, let's get a little bit more in depth on this, okay? So uh, number of leads, right? We talked about that is 87. Uh, the conversion rate uh, from from them, for this company, from, from a lead into a sale is about 40% average, all right? So if you multiply that out, 87 leads times 40% is 35 booked jobs. Average ticket it, for them is around $15,000. And... So 35 jobs times 15,000 is 525,000, all right? So projected ROI on that is 132X, right? This is what I'm talking about, all right? So $525,000 in revenue divided by $3,970 in ad spend is a 132 times ROI, all right? Return on investment. Th that's huge, right? Me, I'm happy with a two times ROI, possibly even a four times or, or five times ROI. Okay. But when we're talking 132, that's, that's massive, man. You know, so, um, so anyways, any, any thoughts on that? Any questions before I move on to the next case study? Where do you sign up to get that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you go to roofingsites.com forward slash schedule right to schedule a meeting with me so um for sure yeah it's we're easy to find just go to roofing sites.com it's it's literally in the company's name okay <clears throat> here's the next case study all right this is uh in a really competitive area okay so this is uh up in the dfw area and uh so this one is 627 clicks 71 conversions Cost per conversion is a little bit higher at $169 cost per division, conversion, right? But with a grand total of $12,000 cost, okay, on all of their ads. And again, it's June 27th through October 24th of 2022. So, you know, basically, um, is that six months? I, I don't think that's six months. I, I would have to do the math on that one. Um, June, July, August, September, October, four month uh, time frame. okay? If you're listening to this, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're listening to me. Show my fingers to to show exactly how many months that was. Okay. Um, all right. So let's get into the actual metrics of this, the the number values of this. Okay. So with this client, um, you know, with 71 leads, uh, conversion rate of 35%. So their their sales process is a little bit, you know, not as fine-tuned as as this other roofing company, but it's 35% is still pretty solid. Um 71 leads times 35% is 24 book jobs, all right? So uh, multiply that times a $15,000 average, uh, you know, job for them. And so multiply that out and that's $360,000 from these campaigns specifically, okay? Projected ROI on that is a 30X, okay? Not quite as big as that other one, but still very solid, okay? Um, and so $360,000 revenue, $12,000 spend. I don't know about you. I would do that all day long and not even blink an eye. Okay. All right. So let's stop here for a second. I'm going to take a drink. Are there any key insights that what you've learned so far here? What did you learn? What did you notice? What would you like to share? I guess type it, it into the uh, chat. Sorry. Yeah. I meant to say that. <laughs> One thing I was thinking about is, I guess, the cost per conversion, and mm -hmm. that comes down to the customer acquisition cost 
What do you yes. think averages for something like a roofing company? So it ranges. It depends on how competitive that the area is. So for, as an example, DFW area has 2000 um, roofing companies that are all vying for those three spots, right? Not everybody is, but there's a lot of them in and in a, it's king of the hill. Um, and so I think really the key is trying to figure out the not so competitive keywords, right? So um, as we saw on cost per acquisition there, you know, we're, we're when I'm get, going back here, if you're listening to this on, on Spotify or, or iTunes or something like that. Uh, but you know, the, the cost per acquisition, uh, is, is basically your cost per conversion, right? So on this one is $169. It's way different than this other one of $45. You know, there's a wide range there. And there are lots of other companies that, that, um, are not quite doing it quite as well, but I think that's a really good range somewhere in between 40 to, you know, upwards of $200, uh, cost per acquisition. Okay. Is really realistic. Um, once it starts getting up too much higher than that, then, um, it's really not, uh, feasible, um, to, unless your, your sales process is really dialed in and your landing pages are on key and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, and hopefully that answered your question. So anywhere in between 40 and $200 is re reasonable. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Okay. So how are we going to set this up and how are we going to structure our pay-per-click campaigns, right? For that minimum cost per lead and maximum re return on investment. All right. So let's talk first about how to structure our pay-per-click campaigns. Well, conversion tracking is a must. It is an absolute must. You make sure, please, 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 if you don't have conversion tracking in place, stop. Stop what you're doing. Stop the ads. Put that into place because if that conversion tracking isn't working, it's not giving valuable information back to Google that those ads are working. And that's part of the algorithm there, right? So when those ads are working really, really well, it lowers your cost per click, right? Hopefully that makes sense. And it does that because Google's like, wow, this ad is working. Let's, let's keep putting it up there and let's, let's reward them a little bit here. Okay. Campaigns really need to be broken into smaller ad groups. We talked about this earlier, right? But you want to make sure that, that the different services that you offer, the different things that, that, main lines of services, first of all, right? Not, not every roofer does just roof replacement, right? Or roof repair. You know, there's a lot of y'all out there that do, you know, windows and siding and gutters and I don't know, roof cleaning, right? And roof ceiling, right? Through something like Roof Max or something like that. So there's all sorts of different services that y'all have, and it's important to break those out into separate ad groups. Okay. Um, Make sure that you have a strong understanding of that keyword match types and don't forget about negative keywords. I cannot stress this enough. Negative keywords are so very important. If you just set your campaigns up and, and let me backtrack a second. What are negative keywords, right? Negative keywords are keywords that you put in that are basically exclude, exclude that keyword from your, your um, searches. Okay. So let's say that, um, a common one that I see is uh, roof shingles, right? There's a lot, a lot of people that that do searches for roof shingles or, or or roofing supplies. Well, if you're a roofer, you're not just selling the same shingles, right? You're not selling the supplies. You want to sell your services. You want to sell a whole roof or ultimately, right? Well, you don't want those clogging up and, and costing you money because every time someone clicks on that, it's costing you money. We have a whole list of these negative keywords that we plug right into every single one of our campaigns to make sure that they aren't happening from the get-go, right? Um, so that's what a negative keyword is. If, if you're not, if you just set your ads up and let them go and don't even add negative keywords in, you are completely and 100% wasting money, okay? So that's another one. Stop the horses, stop the train. Let's, let's put those uh, negative keywords in. All right. Okay. Next one, right. You have to write compelling ads, right? They have to resonate with, with the customers that are, that are, you know, doing the searches. So, you know, make sure you're not talking about yourself, right? We've been in business for 20 years and, 
and blah, 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 blah. They don't care about that. What they care about is if you can, if you can fix their problem, right? That's what they care about. So need roof repair in College Station, Texas. We're your guys. We Then you talk about yourselves, right? And, you know, 24 um, seven, you know, answering services, uh, whatever, you know, all of these differentiators that where you can talk about yourself, but don't say that right out, out, out front. And then the other part is that you want to make sure that your, your keywords are in the actual ad itself. Right. Um, and that's, that's important. Also, we want to make sure that, that those keywords are in those, but the, the text, the ads have to be compelling. Right. And this goes for all of your marketing, not just text ads for, for Google, but we're talking about your website needs to be compelling. You need to be talking about their problems, how you solve them and how they can get it. Those are the three main things that you should be portraying in all of your marketing, hundred percent. Now, the other part here is you want to make sure that you're leveraging ad extensions, right? To make sure that your ad stands out on the page. Um, what are ad extensions? These, these are little things that you can put in like the, like those, uh, phone numbers, right. Or, um, you know, you, you, you can put in your, your different pages and we're going to talk about those things here in a little bit, but you want to make sure that you're maximizing everything that Google's going to give you there. Okay. Um, and it, and all of those things, by the way, makes your ad stand out because not everybody's doing that. That's, that's the great part. And I'm going to show you an example of that here pretty soon. Okay. Uh, you want to land visitors on solid, well thought out pages, right? This is your landing pages. And it is literally one of the most important things that you can put into place right now, right now, all right, is making sure that your landing pages are thought out well enough. They've got all of the things, and we're going to talk about that here in a little bit, but you have to have solid landing pages. Please, please, please don't just send all of your traffic to your homepage because again, you're going to be wasting money. The other part is you want to make sure that you're doing split testing uh, on a regular basis and tweak your ads and fine tune them, right? So what is split testing? Well, um, in the early days of marketing, right? Um, Actually, at the turn of the century, uh, last century, right in the 1900s, um, their their direct marketing started getting real, really big. And what direct marketers figured out is, hey, I've got this list of a million addresses to send out my my ads to. Okay, what if I took a small percentage of that, and let's say a hundred thousand, okay, and and I took, sent one ad to 50,000 and, and the other ad to 50,000. And I'm going to test one thing at a time. That's what A-B split testing is. Okay. And, and so they would test things like, like the headlines. They would test things like the ad copy itself. They would test things like the images. Okay. So, and they would do one thing at a time and take that 100,000 you know, people or even smaller than that. Let's say it's 20,000 people that they're sending it to. And they would, they would find, they would figure out right real quickly which which version of that ad worked and didn't work because they used you know separate um coupons or or separate things you know to track that back then well all of that has been put into technology nowadays okay and split testing in google ads is very very important because you're going to test certain things like your headline you're going to test certain things like your ad copy you're going to test certain things even even i've seen links of where you're sending the traffic to actually make a difference, right? So all of the things, these things matter. And what you want to do is test and, and you literally have two ads in each ad group, right? And you're testing one thing at a time and measuring which one's working, which one's not working. When you find the one that's working, okay, you go, okay, great. This is the working headline. Now we're going to put another ad in there. This time we're going to test our, our, our ad copy, okay? And then you do that and, and you just simply go through it one week at a time, right? Testing those things. And when you have a winning ad, you have a winning ad. Okay. So that's, that's a B split test. Make sure that you're doing that. Um, or your ad folks are doing that because that's super, super important, uh, thing to do. Um, all right. <laughs> I, mean, I said this before and I'm going to say it again. Please, please, please don't even think about spending another penny until you have conversion tracking in place. That is the number one thing I could say to do right now is that if your conversion tracking is off, not working, or just simply not set up, 
stop those ads, stop them now, stop wasting money, get conversion tracking set up on your website and those ads, by the way. Now, here's why, right? Uh, and how to do that. Dynamic number swapping. This is what you want to do with different phone numbers for pay-per-click traffic versus organic. Right, we do this with, with all of our clients. We, we have tracking numbers that, that we swap out. Um, you want to make sure that, that those, because not everyone converts simply from, you know, filling out a form, right? Um, some people will convert by calling you. Some people will convert by filling out one of those forms on the website. Some people will uh, convert by filling out, um, you know, your chat feature. You've got a chat feature, right? Um, they're filling out the the chat feature on your website. Or maybe they, they went to your website, went to Facebook, and then said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and contact these guys because they look like they've been in business because they're re posting on a regular basis, right? So they, the, the, the path that they've taken to that conversion is, you know, different than what you're tracking already here in Google. <clears throat> so make sure all of that is set up to where you can actually know what's, where, where, where do they even come from? All right. Um, make sure that you have a keyword pool with dynamic numbers swapping so that you can track phone calls back to the keyword and campaign again. Super, super basic stuff, but you want to make sure that, that you've got that all setting set up your web forms are being tracked conversion tracks built, built into the AdWords campaign itself, you know, to determine which ad group is generating that lead. That's another important thing. What's actually, what are people actually coming in on, right? Um, are they coming in on the, uh, roof repair, uh, ad group, or are they coming in on the roof replacement ad group, or even more importantly, are they coming in on the hill damage, uh, ad group. Okay. So let's talk real quick about our most important KPIs. All right. Um, the total spend, obviously, right. How much are we, are we willing to spend to get that lead in, um, and, and overall, cause there is going to be waste. That's just how the game is. Right. Um, average cost per click, super important. We want to know, you know, are we paying, a dollar fifty per click, or are we paying twenty five dollars a click? Well, you know that twenty five dollars a click in in the DFW area um, probably should be spent somewhere else. I think, right? Because again, there's only three spots um, on on the top of the page, right? There's three, literally three, maybe sometimes there's four ad spots, right? So we want to make sure that we're we're maximizing that as much as we possibly can. Average cost per lead, we want to know how much that lead costs coming in. Overall, we want to be driving that downwards, okay? And the more that your tracking is in place, the more that, that your ads are converting from a click into a lead, the more that uh, or the less you're going to spend on average cost per lead, okay? And then uh, overall, your return on investment. Those are the main four things that we really need to be looking at and tracking on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis, and knowing exactly what what this is returning you, right? Because it, it, it again, going back to those examples before, it it really is all about that ROI. And you want a to maximize that ROI as much as you possibly can. Okay, so this is going to be quick and easy because you know pay per click campaigns. If you've never set up pay per click campaigns um, before, um, there's there's literally three main areas uh, that you need to be concerned with, right? Um, you want to make sure that that you structure them in the fact that you break them into sm smaller ad groups, okay? Uh, for each of the different services, we talked about that ar already. And so the way that we typically would like to see these, these set up here is one, you've got a brand campaign, the whole campaign set aside just for your brand, right? So when someone searches in, you know, your roofing company's name, then, then your ads are going to show up right there, okay? Um, and you want to make sure that that your competition isn't isn't uh, you know going to show up for for your name too, right? So let's let's take up as many spots as we possibly can. Next one is going to be your general roofing terms. These are going to be like roofer roofing, um, and we'll go into some of the the key terms you know that that we're we're targeting there. Uh, but just know that we've got a general roofing. And then the next campaign is super important, I think, especially here in Texas. That's where we're at. Lots of storms come through here. You know, at least twice a year, we get main lines. Literally, one just rolled through here. I didn't see any hail, um, but we just had a main line of storms blow through College Station, Texas, as right be as we were starting this. Um, but 
you want to be able to turn those storm campaigns on and off, right? Obviously, you don't want those running all the time, but when there's a storm, let's say in Salado, Texas, you want to have your ads running as soon as possible in Salado, Texas, if there's hail there, okay? Ad groups, right? We want to make sure that they are location dependent and services dependent, right? So we want to have, you know, our things broken out in between College Station key terms and and Brian Texas key terms and you know if if we're willing to travel a little bit you know maybe Caldwell Texas right which is about 20 minutes away from Grind College Station um you know and just really you take your service area and you break those up into different ad groups I think you know and that way you can target those different areas with those same keywords right and you're not you're not going to lose anything by doing something like that and in fact you're optimizing it if your landing pages are optimized for those key terms as well. Okay. And then of course your service departments, those are your other, you know, ad groups that we want to set up. And then the ads themselves are based off of the keywords that we're targeting. Right. So there was, a, um, about five years ago, there was a major trend towards single keyword ad groups. Okay. So, so people would set up um, and it worked really, really well for a couple of years and then really stopped working because Google really didn't like that practice. But basically they, they would set up an ad group on, based off of a single keyword. They would set up an, uh, two ads, of course, right? Based off of that single keyword. And there would be one keyword in that whole ad group. That was it. Okay. And then you do that over and over and over again. All right. And so what ended up happening is that you would have all of these, main, you know, if, if you had a hundred uh, keywords that you were targeting, you would have a hundred ad groups, right? And that gets really, really hard to manage. You know, Google's done things, uh, has shifted quite a bit in the past couple of years and they no longer really like that, right? But you still want to have like services, you know, grouped together into the, the ad groups. Okay. So, um, and those services really are those keywords. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. So as we look at these keywords, by the way, we, um, we, we, the main keywords that we target are roofing, roofing services, roof replacement, roofing contractor, roof repair, roofer, roofer near me, roofing, wherever your location is, I'm going to use college station, roofing, college station, roofing services, college station, roof replacement, college station. And you get the point here, right? And, 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 and basically you can, you can structure all of those, um, ad groups, uh, based off of all of those services. So if you, if you have siding, right, you would have siding, uh, in on all of that as well. Or if you had gutters that you wanted to target, or, or if you had windows, let's say, or even doors, right. There's a lot of roofing companies that, that do doors as well. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's make sure that they are structured properly is really the key here. Okay. So let's talk a little bit here about compelling text ads. Right. And we talked about those a little bit. Again, the three main problems, the three things that you need to uh, focus on here are what do you do? How do you solve my problem? And how do I get it? Right. Those are the three things that every ad should answer, every landing page should answer, every single one of your ads, anywhere that you have running anywhere, including billboard ads. Okay. If you're running those, you want to make sure it answers those three things. Okay. And that's really how we want to structure all of our text ads to make sure that they are, they can and will resonate with our customers that are searching for us. Okay. So key here is less is more, right? We, we don't want to talk on and on and on and on because literally there's not enough space that Google will give you for those. So you want to um, definitely have less text. You want to tell them exactly what you want them to do, right? That that That's that call to action. Call us at 979-314-7067. That's Roofing Site's number, by the way. Make sure the ad stands out from the rest, right? And then give them one decision. One decision. Either call, web form, push for it, right? Don't offer them too many options because you give people too many options and they're going to choose not to choose, okay? So let's let's narrow that down as much as we possibly can to give them one choice here. Okay. And again, always split test. You should always, always, always be split testing your ads. Okay. Okay. So here's an example. If you're listening to this on Spotify and or iTunes, um, basically it, it, I took a screenshot this morning and of someone that is in Houston, 
uh, did a search for uh, Roofing Houston. This is someone that we don't work with, but I thought it was a really good example, right? So if you look at these three ads, okay, the one on the top has a lot more room that they're taking up, right? They're taking up a lot more space than the other two. So guess what? Guess who do you think is going to get the most amount of clicks most likely? It's that top one, okay? It's Rock Creek Place, right? They have a lot more space that they're filling up. And literally, you know, as I'm talking this, if you're, again, if you're listening to this, it's taking up about a third of the area, right? Um, well, actually more than a third, almost half of the area of the three ads, okay? That, uh, of the space that the three ads are given, okay? So it's super, super important. There's lots of things that, that Google has buried that you just have to go find in, in the ad, okay? Um, in this next one, we want to make sure that the ads pop out with call extensions, right? So call extensions um, is your phone number, obviously. This is your tracking phone number, hopefully. Um, and then call out extensions. Uh, you want to make sure that that those are are put into place. And then site links. These are all things that that are in the advanced area inside of Google Ads that that you can put those things in. And again, it, it takes up a lot more room. So on this ad, when, um, this was actually a different search. I did a search for... Um, uh, a couple of other areas like roofing uh, DFW, uh, or actually roofing Dallas, roofing Austin, roofing San Antonio, right? And then I came back to Houston and looked at this, and I thought this was really interesting because this is the same company that I had before, but they have a different ad that's showing, okay? Same search, different ad, but this time there's only two ads being shown here, and they are taking up literally two-thirds of the area because of their site links, right? So again, take up as many spots as you possibly can on that page. And, and it's really easy to do inside of Google ads. Okay. So let's talk about landing pages. This is one of the most important things that you can do for your ads, right? One, it should be narrowed down to the service that you are targeting. So if you're targeting, you know, roof repair, make sure, make sure that your page actually has roof repair in the heading you know, it's almost the search engine optimization techniques, right? So we want it in the heading. We want it in, in all the headings, actually. Uh, so H1, H2, H3, we have it somewhere in, in the body text. We have it, um, you know, the image that, that's on the, on the page is optimized for that, meaning that it's, it's got the name uh, of the keyword inside of the name of the image. The video, if you have a video on the page, which I highly recommend, you know, then that also says whatever that that keyword is that 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 page is targeting. Okay, all of these things matter. All of these things are sending signals to Google that that's what this page is optimized for. This is what uh, should be ranking highest for. And by the way, this is what um, you, the the advertiser, should be paying less amount of clicks than someone who is sending it to their their homepage. Okay, so the other things that matter here kind of relate back to that tracking piece, right? And you want a landing page that converts, right? Because we don't want to send all that traffic to a landing page that doesn't convert. So, what is a high conversion landing page? Well, it's something that has your logo on it, right? That's easy something that has your phone number in the upper right-hand corner of your site. Again, that's easy. A big call to action button that either says schedule estimate or um, something like that, or get a quote, click for a quote, something like that. And then you have a video. I highly recommend videos because then you can have the owner come on and talk, uh, you know, and, and introduce himself uh, because people want to know who they're doing business with. So that kind of makes sense. Um, and then call to action buttons throughout the rest of that page, right? Make sure that they are the exact same call to action, that they stand out, that they are easy to understand, easy to push, right? And again, it comes down to those three things that that people should, um, that you need to do, that you need to have in all of your ads and all of your landing pages. You need to know what you do, how you solve my problem, and how I get it. Okay, those three things. And I, I know I've said that several times in this workshop, but it's super important to have that. And then what I like to have on those landing pages are before and after pictures, right? Or even projects pictures of showing people, you know, this is essentially what, what's going to happen, you know, when we come to your house and replace your, your roof. Um, you know, want to keep it nice and clean, call to actions, 
in every section throughout the entire website, right? This right here, what I'm explaining to you, whether you're listening to it on Spotify and iTunes, or you're watching this on YouTube later down the road, or you're here, understand that this is what works, this is what has worked in a long time, for a long time, for websites and all landing pages. I get a question a lot of what is a landing page? Well, it's where we're driving traffic to. That's where they land. That's where your visitor lands. So that's what a landing page is, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. But we wanna make sure that it converts at the highest conversion rate that it possibly can. Okay, I have talked a lot here. I'm gonna skip ahead because I think that we are running out of time. Dang, I've talked a lot, but no. All right, I'm going to go back through a couple of things. Conversion tracking is a must. Make sure that uh, you break your ads into smaller ad groups. Make sure that you have a strong understanding of the keyword match types. And don't forget about those negative keywords. That is super, super important. Make sure that your, your ads are compelling, that, that that'll, they'll get people to actually click on them. And leverage those ad extensions to take up as much as much space that you can on, on that uh, page. Okay. And then make sure that you have your landing pages that are built for high conversions. Okay. Um, all right. Now I get to stop talking for a little bit. All right. We're going to pause here. We, we're almost at an hour. I've talked way too much here. Um, <laughs> what are the key takeaways? What did you learn? What did you notice? What would you like to share? Um, you know, just type it into the chat and Ross will come on and, and let me know. What do you got, Ross? Everybody with me? Type a one in, in the chat. All right, one, one, one. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So I guess the some of the questions I'm getting is it seems like these tasks can seem like a lot or pretty daunting for an individual business owner who might potentially spend most of the time up on the roof, which they don't really want to be doing, but that's where they're at. So... Yeah. I guess, what do you suggest for someone going at this alone or by themselves or if they're not working with the marketing company or do you just say, man, it is a lot. You should really work with a yeah. professional instead. Absolutely. And and so I was told early on in my, um, so I first started the web design in the web design industry and, and really quickly transitioned into marketing. But I was told at um, uh, by a good friend of mine who's a super successful entrepreneur, he said, do you have to uh, outsource three things in every business, right? The first one is IT. You, you, you can't keep up with IT, right? Um, second one is accounting. Accounting is just a bear and you don't want to keep up with that either. Third one is marketing, you know? And um, and and I obviously as a marketing agency owner, um, uh, someone who owns two marketing agencies, absolutely, you should be outsourcing your marketing or you should be building a team in-house, right? Those are the two options that you have there, right? Build a team in-house. Um, if you're big enough to pay for, you know, four or five people to do all of this stuff um, that knows search engine optimization, that knows pay-per-click, that knows uh, Facebook ads, that knows how to write, that knows how to create websites, that knows how to do all of this stuff that, that you need to know how to do, then that's great. Hire that person, keep that person close because that person that knows all of that stuff can get very super expensive, okay? Um, hiring someone like, like roofingsites.com, very easy to do. All you do is we start a conversation, you know, and we look at your marketing, see where the holes are and, and move from there and, and make our recommendations on what needs to be fixed and or, you know, what, what where we need to spend our time, okay? So um, absolutely... You know, those are your two options, either either hire in-house, learn it. Well, actually, there is a third option, learn it yourself and do it yourself. But the problem is, you know, as an owner of a business is that you can't literally do everything, right? Um, you literally have to have other people to, to do some of these things for you, okay? So um, absolutely, can you learn how to do Google Ads? Sure, absolutely. There's tons of information out there to do that. That's how I learned how to do it. I went through courses, I went through you know, all sorts of things and trained. Um, and, and it's something that is fun to keep up with because Google changes all the time, all the time, literally they change on the search engine optimization side of things. They change literally 650 times per year with maybe about six or seven major algorithm changes, you know, every year. So anyways, hopefully that answered your question. All right.
right, we're going to go ahead and move on here because we're getting short on time, but I want to go over that real quick, that, that scenario, right. Of, um, that I showed you with the 87 leads, uh, with a 40% conversion rate. And, and really what we want to, what we're looking at here is that 132 X ROI. This is literally someone that, that we have worked with, um, and are currently working with. And, and it's, it's really exciting to see something like that. Cause that's, that's a unicorn right there, honestly, and really is why I'm showcasing it right now is that that's, that's massive, right. To spend $4,000 and get $525,000 out of that is, is just massive. Absolutely massive. So, all right, I'm going to skip past the questions to ask your pay-per-click uh, provider, but you know, it's all the stuff that we've kind of gone over, you know, and you want to make sure that, that you make those campaigns better make them different um, than, than your competition, because that's really what marketing is about is, is standing out from the crowd and becoming the logical choice versus a choice, you know? Um, all right. So let's talk real quick. Let's take a minute here. And which of the following should you implement right now in your business that'll have the most positive impact? Uh, pick three right? That you're going to focus on in the next 30 days. Is it going to be, um, ad structure? Is it going to be the immediate things like conversion tracking or negative keywords? Is it going to be your landing pages? Are you sending all of that traffic to your main, uh, homepage? Um, if so, then, then, you know, focus on those, those three things. I would suggest focus on those three things first, conversion tracking, negative keywords, uh, where you're sending the traffic and making sure that your landing page solves or answers those three questions. What do you do? How do you solve my problem? And how do I get it? Right. Those need to be at the very top of the page. Right. Um, all right. So I'm moving on <laughs> just cause we're short on time. I'm sorry about this guys, but, um, all of this, what we've talked about today is just one tiny piece in the four hour, roofing marketing system. Okay. The before our roofing appointment machine, this is something that is important, but it's one tiny piece. Okay. There's all sorts of things that go into that to make yourself the logical choice and not a choice in your market. Okay. All right. Do we have any questions at all that we can answer? I'm going to take one or two questions tops because we are over an hour at this point, And I apologize about that. I talked way too much. But uh, go ahead and uh, type it into the chat uh, if you do have any questions. Anything out there, Ross? Just the one thing I had someone come in a little bit late here is what is the best way to get in touch with you and how do they schedule an appointment? Okay, awesome. So um, that's actually one of my next slides here is exactly how to do that. Uh, before I get into that, though, right, I want to recommend. Uh, let you know what our upcoming workshops are. Uh, November 18th, uh, we're going to be going over the ultimate guide to the SEO for roofers. This is my favorite because I'm I'm an SEO geek, right? Um, I grew up on SEO. I grew up on Google. And so I like to think that I'm an expert and, and I'm going to share with you all the tips and tricks of what are working right now for roofing, for the roofing industry. Um, the next workshop after that is December 16th is going to be the 2023 ultimate guide to digital marketing for roofers. This is looking forward to 2023 and, and saying, okay, what should we be changing in our marketing, right? To produce maximum results for, uh, for sales, right? Cause ultimately that's what it comes down to. So what do we need to be changing and looking at and, and adding and implementing and really some of the other things are, what do we get rid of? Right. Um, uh, in this next year. So, um, those are the next two workshops. All right. Now, if you are tired of wasting time and money with ineffective marketing, you need a system that makes, helps you make more sales, right? If you need that and you'd like to free yourself from chasing leads, all you have to do is go to roofingsites.com, click on the little button in the upper right-hand corner, right? That call to action button that I was just talking about. Uh, to schedule a meeting with me and we will go through your marketing and we will uh, really look at all of the lead flow and really accelerate that for you, right? And this is uh, something that you can take with you, um, whether you hire us or not, it doesn't matter. You need to know what the holes are in your marketing system. I'm willing to give that to you away for free because 
my big, hairy, audacious goal again is to double the size of a hundred roof companies by 2025. So the only way that I know how to do that is to one, give you that book that since you stayed here till the end, you're going to get that right. Which is my next thing. And um, we're going to put your name into our system. Uh, and actually uh, I'm, I'm wrong. Go to go.roofingsites.com and you can fill out the form there to tell us exactly where to send your book. But I, and I'm going to autograph it for you and send it out to you personally. And it'll be in your hands by next week at this time. And it is the exact blueprint that you need in order to get your marketing back on track. Okay. All right. That's all that I have. Um, hopefully I answered everybody's questions. And if, if not, then uh, feel free to email me at chris at roofingsites.com. Uh, and I will get back to you as soon as possible and uh, help you out with your marketing because that is my guide. That is exactly what I want to do in life. And that is, I, I want to help you increase your business. All right. Well, y'all have a great rest of the weekend or, or start of the weekend. This is Friday. So uh, have a great weekend, y'all. Talk to you later. <laughs>